everyone. Uh, today I wanted to talk about a system archetype called fixes that fail. And uh, we all know what this is. You have a problem, you put in place a solution to solve that problem, and there's some unintended consequences of your solution that undermine it and the problem doesn't get solved. Or another variation is the problem gets solved in the short term with your solution, but this unintended consequence takes time to really undermine your solution and the problem is solved for a little while and then it goes back to being uh, a problem. So we're familiar with the situation but I wanted to um, talk about it in system dynamics terms to give you more you know, thinking tools to, to, to think about uh, problem solving. So this is a two loop system uh, which is all the other videos have been about a single uh, loop but this is a two loop system where there's a balancing loop which I, oh, I'll describe in a moment I haven't described what that is to you uh, that solves the problem. And then there's this unintended consequence loop that undermines your, your solution. So let me describe a balancing loop uh, first. So um, let's say you have a problem. And your problem is that you have a lot of bugs in your software. Okay? So you decide to solve the problem that you're going to institute code reviews. So that's your solution. So an increase in number of bugs causes you to increase the number of code reviews that you require your team to do, let's say. Uh, and then the number of code reviews, it works in this case. So it decreases the number of bugs. Okay? So this is called a balancing loop. Uh, and basically, it's, it's kind of like a train on the rails loop. So the train gets off the rails. So your product has more bugs than you're comfortable with. So you take an action to solve that problem, the train comes back on the rails. So this is really the normal feedback loops that we have in the world where something gets off, you get feedback, and you put it back on, on uh, track again. Versus the reinforcing loop where it's like a death spiral spinning out of control or a virtuous circle getting sort of better and better and better from a growth point of view. This is more of a control loop, off the rails, back on the rails. So that's what a balancing loop uh, is. So now let me get back to the fixes that fail and a few examples for you. Okay, example number one is an NPI program is running late, so you add people. Okay, so NPI running late. Okay, and that causes you to add people. Okay, so NPI running late causes you to add people. And the adding people, at least you hope, causes the NPI to not run so late anymore. And this may be true, maybe for certain functions or certain tasks or certain activities, adding people has no unintended consequences. But we know that adding people may have these unintended consequences of more meetings, you know, training to bring the new people up to speed, other distractions you know, organization, um, you know, teams changing roles and responsibilities, those sorts of uh, things can cause the folks that were working on the NPI to be doing other things now. And that causes the program to run even later. So this is a reinforcing loop. So it's a bit of a death spiral here. Program runs late, you add people, that adds more meetings and distraction and training. That causes the program to be even more late, you may even want more people, and you get into a death spiral here. So it's a two-loop system, and the question is, which loop is stronger? Okay? If this loop is stronger, the program is going to be, uh, you know, not run as late. And if this outside loop is stronger, it's going to run even later. So you've got to understand the unintended consequences of solutions you put in place and make sure that this doesn't become the dominant loop that undermines your solution. Okay? A couple other examples. Okay, let's say your business is having financial problems, so you issue a travel ban to try and save money. So financial problems causes you to issue a travel, a TNL ban. Okay, so more financial problems, more chance you'll issue this ban or restrict travel, and that restriction in travel will lessen your financial problems you'll definitely save money with less travel costs. Okay? But what are some unintended consequences of this? So, one I can think of is that employees may lose touch with customer needs. Okay? So there might be a misunderstanding of customer 
customer needs. So an increase in travel restriction could cause an increase in misunderstanding customer needs. Could cause us to build the wrong products. So an increase in misunderstanding, increase in building the wrong products, which would be an increase in our financial problems. So it's a reinforcing move. More financial problems, restrict travel even more, create more of a wall between you and customers, build stuff that customers really don't want or don't want to buy, causes you even more financial problems. So, um, so again, here's a situation, actually, it's complicated because the unintended consequences here have delays built in. So once you institute a TNL ban, people don't immediately lose touch with customer needs. But over time, as the needs in the market change and the market evolves, if you keep up this isolation, there might be a delay in this causal link here. That's what this slash slash means. There's a delay here. And certainly there's a delay in building products. So the developers take a year or more to maybe build products. And that, the wrong products takes time before they make it into your financials. So there's a delay in this outer loop. So in a sense, the Tino ban does great things for your financials in the short term but in the long term can really destroy them if this happens. So one way to think about this uh, is a behavior over time graph. So you have your financial performance, you have time. For some reason your financial performance is eroding, so you issue this travel ban, which helps your financials, but over a longer period of time your financials go south because of this unintended consequence. So here might be the ban, you start building the wrong products, but um, they don't really get to market, and they don't cause you to lose market share until later, later on, all because of your one action. Okay, So here's a case where you've got this unintended consequence that has this long delay loop, which causes you problems. Okay, last example. Okay, you have um, annual breakthroughs. So you have products that aren't innovative enough. Okay, they're not breakthrough enough, I'll call it. Okay, so that's your problem. And you solve it by getting more customer feedback. So you increase your customer feedback. Okay, it's a good solution. Uh, and that causes, um, so increase in products that aren't breakthrough enough, increase your customer feedback, and that decreases the products that aren't breakthrough enough. So that is a problem-solving loop, okay? But what might an unintended consequence be? So the more customers you evolve, uh, involve in the process, there might be more market knowledge of your breakthrough. So you might be doing something innovative and now it leaks to the market. Market knowledge of breakthrough. Okay? And that may cause a competitor to copy it. So competitor copy which, once you release it, it's not going to be a breakthrough anymore because a competitor always, already has it. So increasing customer feedback increases the chance of a leak, increases the chance a competitor is going to copy it, and increases the chance that the product's not going to be a breakthrough. Okay? So that's your unintended consequence loop with this solution. Okay? So, um, so those are a couple examples. Now, the point was not that... Um, Travel bans are bad, or adding people to programs are bad, or involving customers is bad. That's not the point. The point is every solution that you put in place has an unintended consequence, and your job is to figure out what it is and try and minimize it. So, for instance, in this case, um, the, the, here's your unintended consequence, that news of your breakthrough leaks. Okay? So what could you do about that? One is you could have the customer sign an NDA. Um, and, uh, and decrease the chance that it'll leak, or involve only a few people at that customer, or only involve customers that can keep a secret, or those sorts of things to minimize the chance that this other loop is going to happen. Okay? So that's the point. Not that these solutions that I've given you are bad. They're fine solutions, but know the unintended consequence and take action here to sort of make sure it doesn't undermine your solution. So I hope that was helpful. hope that gave you some thinking tools around system dynamics and fixes that fail. And until next time, thanks.